Kobe Bryant retired in 2016 after dropping 60 points on the Utah Jazz in his final game. He retired with one of the best resumes in NBA history, 5 championships, 1 MVP, 2 finals MVPs, 18 all-star appearances, 11 all-NBA first team selections, 9 all-defensive first team selections, and more. He's considered one of the best players to ever play the game, one of the most lethal scorers of all time, being one of the few players in the exclusive 30k point club, and he's accomplished all of this in the same team's jersey. When you think of Kobe, you think of the Lakers and vice versa. He now gets a lot of praise for how loyal he was to the Lakers for his entire 20 season career. But believe it or not, there was a time where Kobe Bryant looked like he was going to end up in a different team's jersey, and the closest he came to leaving the Lakers was when a trade with the Chicago Bulls was all but completed. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to quickly introduce you to my second channel. On that channel, I will be doing funny moments gaming content. Right now, I am playing a lot of Call of Duty Blackout. I have two videos up currently, one on the way shortly. Here's a clip from my most recent Blackout video. There's no one here and I'm really tempted to shoot. Oh my god, why? You have issues. Because I Don't want some shoot. action, dude. Oh You're the one who hates this game mode. You want to go fight everybody? I don't want <laughs> the, the, his response. I don't. I want some action, dude. I mean, both of you are alone in a shed. You can get some action. <laughs> I'm gonna fire my gun and stand up. <laughs> Oh damn, that's a long black one. That's what she said. Bam. Why is it so wow. dark? <laughs> that's what she said. That's my joke, damn it, Dwight. If you like gaming content like that, then you'll like my second channel, so please be sure to subscribe. Link will be in the description. After Shaquille O'Neal was traded to the Miami Heat after a crushing loss to the Pistons in the 2004 Finals, it was on Kobe Bryant to be the franchise player for LA. An opportunity Kobe started looking for as soon as the narrative of him needing Shaq began. As Kobe said in the past, there was no way that he was going to spend his entire career with Shaq, because he knew he had to be his own man on his own team to truly be considered one of the greats. So after Shaq was gone, he was free to be the guy on the Lakers. In his first season without Shaq, Kobe averaged 27, 6, and 6, but due to a lack of help on his roster, the Lakers failed to make the playoffs, and Kobe struggled to be efficient on his own, shooting 43% from the field. Next season, the Lakers would make the playoffs because, despite the lack of help on his roster being just as bad as last season, Kobe decided to go insane and average 35 points, 5 rebounds, and 4.5 and assists, shooting 45% from the field and 35% from 3. And he only averaged 3 turnovers despite having the second highest usage percentage of all time. Despite these ridiculous numbers, the Lakers only managed the 7th seed, and they lost in the first round to the Phoenix Suns. He would average 31 the following season, and the Lakers would once again lose to the Suns in the first round as a 7th seed. After this series loss, Kobe was officially done with the carrying that he had to do. Tired of players like Kwame Brown, Luke Walton, and Smush Parker playing 30 plus minutes a game, tired of his only competent teammate being a crackhead, and tired of wasting his prime on a piss poor roster. More than anything, he was tired of hearing that he couldn't win without Shaq, because so far it was true. True because of unfair circumstances, but true nonetheless. Saying, listen, if, if this is the conversation, I don't want this conversation. When I retire, I don't want people to say, okay, he only won because of Shaq. As unfair as that is, Magic never won without Cap, right? Michael never won without Scotty. So, but here I am getting stuck with this argument which is not fair, but yet this is the argument people will make, and I'm not okay with that. And so therefore, I knew, okay, I gotta, I gotta go. So before the 2007-2008 season, Kobe demanded a trade. Here's a clip of Kobe talking to Stephen A. Smith on one of Stephen's many failed shows. 
to you're still under contract with them. Are you saying right here on this show that you want to be traded? Yeah, I would, I would like to be traded, yeah. There's no, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. It's not a situation I, where what, what, if, what, if, what if, you know? I know before you reportedly said that you would like them to get Jerry West back. Are you saying now emphatically, regardless of what they've done, you want out of Los Angeles? Yeah, I would like to be traded. It's tough as it is to say that. It's tough as it is to, to come to that conclusion. Um, you know, there's no other, there's no other, there's no other alternative. When Kobe demanded this trade, he gave the Lakers a list of teams that he'd like to be traded to. And the team at the top of that list was the Chicago Bulls. Kobe could pick what team he goes to because the contract extension he signed after Shaq was traded included a no trade clause. So Kobe had total control over whether or not a trade gets completed. The Lakers first move was to call the Cavaliers and offer Kobe for LeBron, which led Cavs management to hang up the phone, rip out the cord, and throw it in the dumpster. One of the biggest trade offers that Kobe called off was from the Pistons, who offered Rodney Stuckey and Rip Hamilton for Kobe, but Kobe had no interest in playing in Detroit with declining vets and Chauncey Billups and Rasheed Wallace with no Ben Wallace. There was a trade that was all but completed, as backed up by Kobe. Well, that is, I didn't get any of that, because we were looking for homes. Right. We were actually looking for homes in Chicago. Researching schools, um, places to live. So that was true, you were going to go to the Bulls? Yeah. The Bulls had offered Ben Gordon, Luol Deng, Tyrus Thomas, and rookie center Joakim Noah for Kobe Bryant. This was a hell of a package for the Lakers. Ben Gordon was only 23, coming off of a season averaging 21 points per game, shooting 41% from three. He was essentially 2007's Bradley Beal. Luol Deng was only 21 and just averaged 19 points on 52% shooting while playing elite defense. Tyrus Thomas was trash, but young and athletic, so there was some potential there, and Joakim Noah was the ninth pick for a reason. That's a lot of assets for one player, even if that player is the best player in the league. And that ended up being the problem. Ben Gordon, Luol Deng, and Joakim Noah were basically the whole Bulls roster. Remove those guys and you have Kirk Heinrich, who was a role player, an old-ass Ben Wallace, and Andres Nocioni, a decent stretch four, and Larry Hughes, an okay score. Kobe would essentially be leaving the no-talent Lakers for the no-talent Bulls. He would find himself in the same situation, just in a different team's jersey. The big hang-up was Luol Deng. Kobe could live with Gordon being gone because he was a shooting guard, so he would have just became a bench player, and Joakim Noah was an unproven rookie. And again, Tyrus Thomas sucked. But Deng was a player that Kobe seriously respected and wanted to play with, so if Deng was in the deal, Kobe was going to decline. Unfortunately though, the Lakers would not take a trade from the Bulls that did not include Deng, so talks died. The Lakers held on to Kobe, signed some role players like Derek Fisher in the offseason, and traded Pau Gasol for pennies on the dollar. The roster became more well-rounded with Fisher as the starting point guard, Lamar Odom becoming a sixth man, and Andrew Bynum finally becoming a starting caliber center. The Lakers would go to the finals three years in a row, winning two out of those three series. Kobe got what he wanted, proving that he could win without Shaq, so ultimately it worked out for Kobe and the Lakers. So, that's the story of how Kobe Bryant almost became a Chicago Bull. He came incredibly close to wearing Bulls red. If the Lakers were a little bit more desperate to trade Kobe, say Kobe pushes harder, and there's a good chance that Kobe Bryant ends up a Bull alongside Luol Deng. That duo would draw a lot of comparisons to Jordan and Pippen, and ironically enough, the main reason that Kobe wanted to play in Chicago was so that he could try and overshadow Jordan's legacy in the city that he played in. I do think that Kobe, Deng, and some role players could have been enough for a championship or two. Luol Deng was was about as good as Pau Gasol, so it was definitely a possibility. If you'd like to see a what if on the scenario, the 2K footage of Kobe slash Jordan lobbing it to Dang slash Pippen came from a what if that I made on Kobe being traded to the Bulls a while ago. That what if wasn't super realistic, like I gave the Bulls way too many star free agents, but it was still a fun scenario. Being a Bulls fan and a Kobe fan, I'll probably eventually do a new version of the same scenario that's more realistic. But you can check it out with the icon on the top right. Please be sure to check out my second channel with everything going on in NBA YouTube. Having a backup channel will always be useful, and the content on there, in my opinion, is pretty solid. So check out the second channel. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and cue the outro music. I dare you play your cards, boy, you bet I'm a transitor too.
What's it, Brian?